What's up YouTube, Andrew here. So recently Apple released their brand new augmented reality headset uh, Vision Pro a few weeks ago. Uh, I thought it would be cool to create a tutorial on how to make your own living space into a augmented reality uh, inspired setup. And uh, I used a bit of After Effects and a bit of uh, Blender for 3D. It's fairly simple. So if you want to learn how to do it, this is the tutorial for it. If you want the exact files that I used in, the in this tutorial, including the Blender and After Effects source files, you can find them in Patreon. But to follow along, you don't need any of the files. You can use your own footage. First step would be to have some footage you can work with. I have my own uh, footage that I shot through my iPhone. Uh, it can be anything. You can download something online if you don't have something to work with. We want to start tracking it, so you go to the tracker in here and then track camera while the footage is selected. If you don't see the window, go to window and enable tracker. And uh, under 3D camera, you can see the number of frames that have been tracked. And uh, once it's done tracking, we can go to the next step. The scene is done tracking. You can see tiny dots scattered around the scene. Uh, those are the trackers that uh, After Effects created for us. If you increase the track point size, you can see them properly. Yeah, these trackers can be used to uh, latch our objects onto and you can see a target um, sort of thing that indicates what sort of orientation an object would be uh, if we were to track one by one. But we want to actually select a area of trackers so we can have more precision. So let's try something here. I think these dots might work. Um, it has some alignment with the monitor if you look at the target. But I think we can do better so let's try this. Yeah that works a bit better. So we can always fine tune this but let's go ahead right click create solid and camera. We have a solid that's created on the timeline. Uh, if you drag, al drag along the uh, footage you can see it's properly pinned. Now we can use these uh, controls to fine tune its position, use our eye to align it properly with the scene. After Effects does a good job of tracking objects but we can go ahead with the fine tuning as we like it. You can see it's pretty much stuck in the screen now. So this is what we want. And if you use the blue arrow to bring this forward, it will actually move in space and now it has created some kind of depth effect so it's actually it actually looks like it's in front of the monitor next i'm going to bring in a size reference which i designed in figma i have designed a window that i want the final vision os window to look like and i'm going to bring in, bring in the background to use as a size reference to keep the ratios in uh, align with my design so i can just Start drawing a square on top of this to try and match the size. And then we want to convert this into a adjustment layer which you can do over here. Don't worry if things disappear, we are going to make use of that in a second. Go to effects and presets and search for box and you will find the fast box blur under here. You can drag it into the window we just designed. And then if you increase the blur radius to something decent, you can see the background of that square, the rectangle will blur depending on the amount of blur you set. If you try to set a color to this, it won't work. So if you want to do something like that, you want to create a different rectangle. You can just duplicate the existing rectangle we designed and get rid of the fast box blur effect and then revert it back to a normal layer by turning off that adjustment layer. Then you want to make it transparent a bit which you can do by pressing T on the keyboard. And now if you set a color, it will work. I'm going to do some fine tuning with the colors and blurs here. So you can go ahead and uh, 
do the same. Next I want to add a border to this window by duplicating the color layer. We will use that uh, border to show the effect of light on the window, a reflection sort of. We are going to enable the stroke options and drop it down to control the width uh, as our liking. We are going to do a bit of fine tuning with this and see how we go and fine tune it based on uh, how we like it to look. Control the width a bit more, have it tiny. That might be a bit too much. But we are going to use the width for better visibility. So tap on width and enable linear gradient so we will have a gradient color to work with which is important so if you move this little knob you will control how the light basically the effect or the illusion of light can be imitated on the window so i'm going to drag the top place it somewhere on the top You can play with this to find the direction of lighting so apple recommends or basically what they have done is all already on their windows is to have the windows emulate the effect of light on the edges based on the direction of light on their rooms on the users rooms so we're going to use the top edge since it emits more light The effect is still rather too strong okay that will work a bit better now it's still a bit too harsh but as always we can fine-tune it along the way we do it to 50 percent is better so now you can see it emulates the effect of light on top of it you can call this I'm now going to move the color layer on the top and start parenting all the layers to the screen layer. You can use the whip tool here, just drag it and drop there. The screen now will act as the parent and everything will move along with it. So you don't have to select multiple layers. Now I'm going to convert all this into 3D layers. You can use this panel just press and hold and drag now all of our screens or rather the windows are in the 3d space and the camera recognizes it as a 3d object so if you run along the timeline you can see that it's in the scene um, before we get to converting all the layers into 3d it's easier to design the ui and add the graphical elements to it so i'm going to start doing that now I'm going to speed things up a bit in here but if you need to slow down the video you can use the YouTube playback feature and look at all the steps. In summary I will bring the elements like I said earlier and design the UI and I will also design two other components which is the player for the bottom and a navigational component for the left. I will use the same techniques as I did earlier for the windows and uh, design their backgrounds as well. I will see you in a bit. Hey welcome back, 
the UI is designed and it's time for us to convert all the layers into 3D layers which I'm doing here it will move into a weird position but we can uh, fix that later if you move the playhead you can see that the screens are in the 3D scene and the camera recognizes it as a 3D object um, before we align it it's important to link all the layers or parent them to one single layer in our case it's going to be the screen layer so all I have to do is select the screen layer and uh, move it around and everything else will follow it so it's easier than moving all the layers one by one so if you select the screen you can move it in the 3d space so the objective here is to align the screen into the position where it would look the best in my case it's right in front of the monitor and on, on top of the desk so I'm going to use the help of these arrows and uh, move my playhead along and see where it fits I'm sure there's a better way to do this uh, rather than using my eye so if anyone knows a better way you can comment it probably if there's a way to align the window into the red square that would be helpful um, but if anyone knows such a way to align objects in 3d space let me know in the comments but i'm going to do this manually for now and i'm going to speed things up a bit and i'll see you in in a second hey welcome back after a bit of struggle i've managed to align the scene properly but now it looks better and uh, this is a position i think works well and I've been testing out a bit of depth effect as well and I will show you how it works in a second. So let's use the earth element and push it back in the scene. And uh, that will basically allow us to add more depth to the scene, to the window. And uh, the earth will move differently from the text and it will have the illusion of depth. And uh, the further back it goes the more depth it will have but there's a sweet spot we need to find and we'll do that by playing around so the current level is not enough and we need to push it back a bit more and increase the size so that it fills the scene as you can see the earth moves differently from the text and creates a nice depth but this might be a bit too deep and also it has left a bit of a gap we need to fix it by increasing the size of the earth and that's pretty much it so you will have some depth in the scene now and now you can export the footage which we will use back in blender to add the 3d objects to the scene and you can stop the tutorial right here and call it a day because this is pretty much what you need to show a vision always window but if you plan to add 3d uh, keep watching and I'll see you in Blender. So once you're in Blender, you want to change the working layout to motion tracking and drag and drop your footage into the window. Once it's there, you can set the frame rate. In our case, it's 60 FPS. Go to scene, frame rate and set it to 60. Also remember to change your render engine to cycles and if you have a GPU select that. Next we want to make sure we are working with all the frames so tap on set scene frames and Blender will expand the timeline to show all the frames of our video and I'm going to change a few settings on this panel here which will ensure a good tracking of the scene. Blender's tracking isn't as strong as uh, After Effects so we had to work our way through it and these small changes help place our trackers properly and have a good scene set up for us to put our 3d objects in the idea is to have a sol rate less than one and making sure your trackers are less prone to errors uh, will help us get there quickly so once you are happy press on track markers and Blender will do its magic.
if you look at the graph you will see an occasional spike a few outliers those are the ones we need to get rid of for a better sol rate and we will get rid of them and try our hand at solving and see what kind of cut kind of error it will get so go to solve tap on focal length and solve camera motion and we will see our rate here which is 0.74 which is really good and our scene has a good tracking going on and if it's less than one you're good to go but if it's more then you need to work on the trackers by removing the outliers or getting rid of uh, wild trackers next we want to set the scene as a background you can do that by tapping on set as background and you need to set the floor next so select three trackers and tap on floor and you can also set tap on setup tracking scene to enable a floor plane so we actually don't need the floor plane but let's take the cube and resize it by pressing s to scale down and we will hide the background because we don't need it for this scene so if you play the wind uh, timeline you will see that the object is in place and the camera is actually working its way through the scene if you can't see the uh, window you can increase the opacity and you can see the track aspect the object shouldn't have any kind of wobble or moving around and uh, that can be solved by getting a error rate less than one so we will use these trackers to place any kind of object in the scene and the idea is to adjust the lighting to blend it nicely make sure you save the file that you successfully tracked and go to layout go to view camera and we want to see the trackers which is invisible at the, at, the, at the time so we want to enable that you can go up here and enable motion tracking so if you run through the video you will see all the trackers nicely placed in the scene so we will use one of these trackers to place our object in we can go ahead with this tracker here press shift s cursor to selected and uh, whenever you add a new object it will be spawning from that point before bringing in our actual objects i think it will be easier to play with an existing object and try to align it with the scene and then bring in our object so I will try as much as I can to align it properly press uh, ctrl 2 to smooth this object which is pretty much adding a subdivision modifier as you can see here so ctrl 2 is the shortcut for that so if you turn it off and on you can see how it was before by playing the video you can get an idea of how the object is aligned in the scene i will use the uh, controls in blender by pressing g and then selecting an axis either z x or y to move the object and try to align it as much as I can this alignment doesn't look that good but I think we had a better position earlier so I'm going to undo by pressing ctrl Z that position seems to be better so now we can replace the monkey with an object we like in my case I'm going to use this rocket um, it's on blend swap designed by Chris uh, and you can find free models on blend swap and use them after crediting the users so I'm going to use this rocket uh, instead of the monkey first we want to set the cursor to the selected object so once we import the new one it will be easier to position it let's hide the monkey and start importing the object so go to file append 
and select the file you downloaded and go to its collection and select the folder with the object so you can pre-open the file pre uh, prior to this and check which folders you want to import and you can import the entire folder this way so i'm going to select all the objects and resize it since i don't want to be selecting all objects every time i want to make an action happen it's better to parent it to something so let's parent it to the front of this select the front control p and object keep tracking so i can just select the front and then move easily let's reposition this and i'm going to do some fine tuning to find a good position or a rather a good angle for the rocket to be placed in the scene once you're happy with the angle you can start adding lights and uh, you you won't be able to see lights in the current view so you will have to visit the rendered view so press z and go to rendered view and you will notice that the background disappears so go to the render settings under film enable transparency and also while you're there you can change the colors of the scene to a more stronger set uh, which is medium high contrast and you can play around with these settings for better results let's delete the existing light and press shift a to add our own light i'm going to use a point light as a start the idea should be to emulate the existing lights in in the scene so my points of light would be the monitor and the logo on top so i'm trying to imitate its position as much as possible and try to match the lighting that way we will get a much more realistic result and the object will look like it belongs in the scene so i'm trying different angles here to try and find a good position for our light we can always tune this later but once you're happy with something you can go ahead and uh, work on its settings i'm increasing the power and the size of the radius of the light to something acceptable and then try to match the colors so the purple was too strong but i'm trying to keep it subtle but still look like there's light hitting the rocket i'm going to speed this area a bit because it's just me placing lights around the scene but in general you want to try and match the lighting of the scene and try to mimic real lights and i was thinking that it would be better if i got rid of the solar panels i would have a lot more room to increase the size of the object and uh, in theory it wouldn't be the wisest choice to remove the solar panels of a rocket but for the purpose of the tutorial i will do that and increase the size once you are happy you can start adding animations and i will show you a simple animation i did for this scene so select the object and change the anchor point to local and so pull the keyframes back to one and press i and drop a rotation keyframe and you can start rotating it in the x-axis to get some kind of roll parallel roll animation going so I'm manually rotating it here give it a few turns drop it press i again and rotation now if you watch it will gently rotate by default blender will add a easing to your animation which is good in most cases but in our case we want the animation to be linear which means that it needs to be consistent in its rotation that it doesn't slow down in the end so just right click on the keyframe and go to easy interpolation mode and linear so now the animation will be consistent all around the next step is to render the frames out so we just need the rocket rendered and not the whole video and we will export that set of frames and import it in back into after effects 
and uh, make a complete video we don't want to burden the graphics card with a, a video we've already rendered so we just need to render the rocket here and here I'm adjusting the sample sizes and the denoising settings you can follow the exact same steps if you have an Nvidia card or Google for AMD settings you can use your CPU as well but um, a graphics card will make it much much faster before you actually move on to rendering check your preferences to see if the graphics card is being utilized by blender and uh, make sure you select one of the two CUDA or optics x tabs and then uh, save it uh, ideally optic x would be faster then you want to go to compositing and uncheck the nodes on the top use nodes so that the video won't be rendered and it will be just with the rocket then you can render a test image before you give it the full go this is exactly what we need a transparent rocket and you can give the full animation render and we'll see you back in after Here we have all the frames rendered out all we need to do now is import this back into after effects so right click on the import window let me make some space here and import file select one of the frames make sure it's footage and make sure it's a png sequence and tap on import and then drag and drop that into the timeline it fits beautifully just as we want it and you'll notice that the video is a bit longer the, than the timeline so to fix that go to interpret and main and you have to set the frames to whatever frames you're working with so in our case it's 60 and it'll fit nicely there press ok and you're done so you can use after effects to even fine tune the colors do a little of color balancing but this looks perfect for now you can render this out from after effects and that's it here we go so thank you for watching if you have any questions you can drop a comment and don't forget to subscribe i will see you with another video soon